today we're going to make a wicking barrel. Now wicking beds, or in this case a wicking barrel, are useful for growing a wide range of crops or plants, pretty much anything with a shallow root system. So our wicked area of good soil is going to be about 30 centimetres. So anything that has a 30 centimetre or less root system uh, is perfect for a wicking bed. So all our leafy green crops, um, you, know, you could give tomatoes a go, they do have a decent root system on them though which could be problematic. Uh, a lot of our brassicas, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of that stuff can all be grown in a wicking bed. Now in front of you, you'll see the materials and tools you will need. So, of course, a barrel. Uh, this is a 44 gallon barrel or a 220 litre barrel. Very common, get them from most hardware stores or produce stores, places like that. Um, they've always been used, the ones you generally pick up in those sorts of places. So do make sure it hasn't had any poisons in it, but I'll speak more about that in a moment. You'll need perforated ag pipe or um, also drainage pipes, got a no number of different names. The soft stuff just prevents having to use shade cloth or anything else to keep the media out of your drainage pipe, which is uh, much easier than the shade cloth. Um, a fill pipe, in this case we're going to use PVC and I've got these little end caps just so we can cap it, keep dirt out of the, uh, the wicking or the, the sump area down below. Some small bits of shade cloth, uh, two 19mm straight barbed fittings, two because we're going to do two wicking barrels out of this one barrel, uh, two 19mm top hat grommets, now those you will not find in your local hardware store you will have to go to an irrigation supply store to get those, unless you've got one heck of a hardware store. So if you can't find them locally, go to an irrigation store, they'll have them. A couple of zip ties. And then the tools we'll need is a 22 millimeter hole saw, jigsaw, sharpie, or some way of marking the barrel before you cut it out. And just a Stanley knife or deburring tool, just to clean up um, after we've cut our barrel. All right, let's get into it. Now when you select your barrel, make sure the barrel you have is food grade. So in my case, you'll see we're using HDPE2, which is a food grade plastic. Now if you're getting a 44 gallon drum or 44 ba gallon barrel in Australia, um, you're probably looking at one of these or one of the rounded ones they usually use for, rounded top I mean, that they usually use for olives and things like that, food products. They are both made out of um, food grade plastic, so you should be right with either of those, but it always pays to check. I did mention to make sure that your barrel hadn't had poisons or anything too nasty in it. Um, it should be labelled on the side. If it's not, make sure you trust whoever's selling it to you to, I wouldn't trust them. I would make sure it had this label on it still, but if it doesn't, yeah, be fairly sure of what it's had in it because you will be eating food out of this. Now this barrel, clearly labelled, it's had acetic acid or vinegar, 90% uh, solution, okay? So acetic acid, being an acid, is water soluble. I'll clean out this barrel. Um, dilution is how you clean out acids. Um, so I'm gonna wash this out quite a few times before we start. Make sure it's nice and clean and ready to go. To open your barrel up, there's two bungs on one end of the barrel. The other end's just blanked off. Now, they do make special tools for opening these bungs, and um, a lot of people actually just use vice grips, which works quite well. Now, complete accident, but a hive tool fits in there and works to open these bungs up. So I just use my hive tool, uh, nice and easy. Just, they're not hard to open, so you just loosen them up. Use the other end just to turn it and I can clean it out through there. As you can see, once you're done, do them up tight and you're good to go. Now these do seal to a degree. If you want to seal it really well, so you're sure there's no water leakage as I do, uh, just put a bit of silicon in there before you do it up and that'll make sure it's nice and well sealed. Just brought the barrel outside to wash it out. You'll notice I'm not wearing gloves. I know these have already been washed out once before I ever pick them up um, because I know my supplier. But if you're not sure, make sure you are wearing gloves, this, particularly if you're using something like 90% acetic acid. Um, they call acetic acid, it's a weak acid, which means it doesn't disassociate completely, but don't be fooled, it'll burn your face off. Now, simply open both bungs. 
and fill it up with water. Do this a couple of times to make sure you've washed the barrel out completely. If you're still worried, once you've cut the barrel, you can use some soap and water, depending on what's been in it. Mark out your barrel, simply measure end to end and divide by two. Now I'm not going to give you my dimensions because every barrel is going to be different. Um, so you're going to have to measure your own barrel and go from there. Now I'm going to go around and mark every, every, I don't know, 20 or 30 centimetres I guess. Then I'm going to get a piece of straight cardboard to draw my line. Once you've drawn your line, you need to start your cut somehow. Now, I tend to just start it with an uh, angle grinder because I've got a battery powered one that I keep here in the garage. But if you don't want to use an angle grinder, you can angle in to your jigsaw cut. Now, I'm not very good at that, so I use an angle grinder. Once you've got a place to start, cut around your barrel with your jigsaw. Then you can tidy up the edges with that Stanley knife we spoke about earlier. Now as my barrels are just over 400 high and I did want 300 mm media, um, I've decided to make my drain plugs or my drain holes um, 120 off the bottom. This, this accounts for the 100 mil of ag pipe reservoir that I've got in the bottom and still gives me just over 300 mils of media above the drain, which will be my, uh, my wicking media where the roots or where most of the roots of the plants are. So as you can see, I've marked it just here and now I'll cut it out with my hole saw. Now to make a good seal when we do put our drainage plug in here or our drainage grommet, uh, we do need to clean up around this hole as well as we can just so we get that seal. And don't forget to do it from the inside as well. Now we've got the barrel side of our two wicking beds sorted. It's time for a quick clean up. To uh, make your drainage fitting or your drainage bung, just get your barbed um, straight connector, your 19 mil straight connector. Put your fly screen or shade cloth over it and wrap it around so it's tight. Then simply get your uh, zip tie. And do it up nice and tight and there's your drain. Now I'll show you how to connect that into the barrel using your top hat grommet. Place your top hat grommet from the inside out. If you drilled your 22 millimeter hole, it should fit and it does. Then get your drainage hole and you're gonna get the side that doesn't have the shade cloth on it, the empty side or the, the non uh, netted side. And you're gonna push that through to the outside from the inside. Now I got this idea from Rob, um, I'll link to his page below. In the clip he did this in, and you can see where I got that idea. There you go, that's your drainage hole. Nice tidy hole. And on the inside, you can see where it drains from. Okay, so now I'm cutting the reservoir pipe. So I've tied one end, looped it round in the bottom, and I'm roughly judging whereabouts it's going to go to. Now make sure you give yourself a bit of extra, bit of extra socks so you can tie it up around the filler pipe and cut around. All right. Now we're going to place our filler pipe in the top of this end. So I've cut the filler pipe just out of PVC and you can see I've cut an angle on the bottom. 
just so that the water can enter the, the reservoir pipe that little bit more quickly. All I'm gonna do is cut a small slot in the top, put my reservoir pipe in, pull the sock up around it, and tie it on with a zip tie. We do that now. Being careful not to cut myself. So I've got my uh, got my flap. I can place my reservoir pipe in there. Oh, sorry, my filler pipe. Pull the sock up around it to keep any. Uh, media out make sure i've got it up on all sides then simply place my zip tie around and make sure it's nice and tight all right ready to go i'm now going to drill two small holes through the edge of my barrel and two small holes through the filler pipe so i can attach it there if it's attached, it's easy to just stuck it, stick a hose in the top when I want to fill it and it can stop small hands from pulling it out, possibly pulling it out of the bottom of the reservoir and out of the reservoir pipe and uh, making a, a hell of a mess. And there you have it, two wicking beds ready for some planting action. Now the one on the right, I cut the reservoir to what I consider to be the right length. Um, it'll work for me, but on the left I cut it a little bit short. So handy tip Bit of extra pipe tied on either end will up your reservoir holding capacity In the next clip I'll show you how to uh, place media or how you should structure the meter media in your beds and um, I'll plant these out. Thanks for watching. Oh And don't forget your pipe cap